G'day viewers, I'm Train Simulator Driver, and if you hadn't guessed, I'm from Australia. I'm also known as Paul, and I live in Melbourne, right down the bottom of the bottom, you know, down there. But anyway, today we're on Sherman Hill, and we're going to do a bit of switching around Cheyenne, because I wanted to take the opportunity to introduce this activity to you, because it occurred to me that a lot of people probably come into the games and they don't have a railway or railroad background and they've probably never even heard terms like switching and shunting and points and cars and things like that. So I thought I'd give you a bit of a look at it. Righto then, let's just get on with it, shall we? Hmm, maybe not. We need to actually plan this out just a little bit because the whole point of this is to do it in a reasonable number of moves with safety and to not spend too much time doing it, but still have fun. So, I've got a switch list of the cars that we need to find, and we're going to be delivering to a few customers. We're going to be sending some crude oil in tank cars to Suncor Energy. That's down this track here somewhere. We're going to be sending some ethanol, also in tank cars, to Frontier Refinery. Now, those two things are flammable and explosive, so we probably want to keep something between us and them because yeah, you don't really want a fried engine driver, do you? Next up, we've got Wyoming Steel, and they're getting some coking coal in a hopper. Well, a couple of hoppers, actually. That could burn, but, you know, it's actually pretty hard to get it going. And we've got Sierra Trading, who are getting mixed goods in some boxcars, and that seems to be fairly safe. And then we've got Pine Bluffs Feed and Grain, who are getting cattle feed in covered hoppers, and then we've got Cruise Concrete, who are getting some lime in the covered hoppers. So that's the order we're going to deliver. Suncor, Frontier, Wyoming Steel, Sierra Trading, Pine Bluffs, Feed and Grain, and then Cruise Concrete. So we can probably use those cars to keep us safe and keep us away from the flammable and explosive things. Now, some railways require you to have what's called buffer cars on both ends of a dangerous consist. So... I think we might use the covered hoppers to do that. So first up, let's take a little drive down here and let's get going. And we're going to go and couple up to these boxcars down here. And then we'll go out for a little bit of a walk. So in reality, the engine driver or engineer, depending on where you come from or whatever terminology you use locally perhaps you even use locomotive pilot i know that's popular in some countries normally you wouldn't get out because you know you're the person in the hot seat you've got the job to do you've got to drive the train and you'd normally have shunters or conductors or switchmen or switch people or whatever it is that you would normally call them in your country on the ground doing the work now unfortunately this game isn't multiplayer, so guess what? You've only got me. Oh well. That just means we have to get out and go for a bit of a walk. That's okay. It's all good. Now, if you're listening, Dovetail, multiplayer would be cool. So we're getting pretty close to this boxcar, so let's just slow down quite a lot. And then we can just nudge up to couple up to it. There we go. Done. All right, so let's just make this locomotive safe. So we're just going to turn off our gen fields, put the reverser into the middle there, and I've already fully applied the independent brake. Righto then, we've got our switch list. We'll go outside and explore in a moment and go for a walk and figure out which cars that we're going to pick up. But first up, let's just have a quick look at the map. So we have got some clear tracks and some occupied tracks we're going to put the train that we're putting together into this track and we're going to put the things that we don't want into this track over here so that'll just help us keep things organized so now it's time to go for a little walk let's just do that get the door open and down we go Now, the first car that we want is quite a long way down here. So the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of these cars that we don't actually want. So we've got 98, 40, 79. That might be the first one that we want, I think. 
Now I'm just looking at my switch list. Yep, this is the first one that we actually want. So we are going to cut the other ones off. Let's just go for a little walk back up here. Sorry about the strange camera angles. All right, let's do this. Okay, so I think we should go and jump back in the loco now. And just to stop us having to walk everywhere, we'll do this. Let's just turn the gen field back on. Release the independent brake, and I've put it in reverse. Now we're pulling such a small consist, we don't have to wait too long for the brakes to pump up. And you'll also notice I went straight for notch three. It's because we're only pulling a few cars. It really won't matter. I'm just not going to break up any break any couplers doing this. So let's get this switch set so that we can put the cars into the empty road. You'll notice I've also taken advantage of an Xbox controller. Because this way I can move the trains with the rail driver and use the Xbox controller to interact with the environment. All right, here it comes. We're going to take these a fair way down because I need to make plenty of room here. So just bear with me for a moment while we do this. And while we're interacting with the environment, I've turned the HUD back on because it just makes it a little bit easier because you get the little dot. Generally speaking, I play without the HUD but uh, do what's right for you. Remember those hoppers with coal? I guess that's them. Or are they gondolas? Hmm, American railway speak. Whoops, railroad speak. Sorry. Just get these down past the tank cars and we will drop them off and we will have a look at the next move. So you've probably already noticed, you can see where all of the cars that we're going to be shunting are. Now I won't make you watch all of it because I don't want you to be hanging around forever just watching this guy do this. All right then. Righto, let's just go and get rid of these boxcars. Let's open him up. And back into our loco. Righto, we've dumped the boxcars, so let's head back up the other end. 
so we can go and get some more of our train. Now we want these tank cars that are here to our left. And we're also going to want the uh, gondolas that have got the coal in them. And we also want those boxcars that are up here. So let's go and push all of these together now. Now I've checked all these numbers off on my switch list and these are definitely the cars that we actually do want. So we can push these together and form up the first part of our train. Now you probably notice when I'm moving with just a loco I'm using the independent brake which if you're driving with the controls is this one and when I've got carriages or cars I use the automatic train brake now if you've only got a few um, you could probably quite safely just use the independent brake it's common shunting practice to do that all right then it's time to go and do that exciting thing again let's go and change some points now in your local vocabulary you may call these switches and that's quite okay so these are the ones we want and this time I'm using the mouse so you can use anything you want to control these and just so we're not here all day let's use the shortcut to jump back into the loco change direction and you can see what's happening with the controls down there and off we go. Now we don't want to go too hard here because we're going to couple up to these boxcars. And we're going to pump up their brakes and we're going to push them into the gondolas. And pump up those brakes and we're going to push those into the tank cars. Now a safe coupling speed and coupling is the activity of joining two parts of a train together a safe coupling speed is about four mile an hour and i'm using mile an hour even though australia's metric because we're in a mile an hour train in a mile an hour route in a mile an hour country and i tend to adjust to whatever the local measurement system is so if i'm driving a german train i'll be in metric And one day, I hope to be driving an Australian train. One day. That would be really cool. All right, so I'm just getting our speed right down. And we just try and judge this well enough so we go bonk. But we don't hit it too hard. All right, so hopefully we will pump up these cars. It shouldn't take very long because there's not many of them. So let's just give them a shove and see what happens. They're moving quite happily, so let's just leap outside and see how we're going here. Ooh, that's a bit janky, isn't it? All right, let's stop our acceleration because we don't want to push these into each other too hard. Ooh, I got stuck on that car. Oh, well, I'm sure we've all been there. I'll just start slowing it down a little bit with the independent brake, but I don't want to stop. There we go. So we should be pumping these ones up again now too. And let's go and push these ones into the tank cars. We've got a few more now, so I'm just going to go up to notch three this time. Maybe just a little while before it moves because it's going to have to pump up the brakes. We've got a few more cars now. Let's jump back into the cab and see how that's going with the gauges because it looks like we're not moving yet. Our brakes are still releasing. Oh, the bells, the bells! Now, 
Of course, the brakes release up close to the locomotive before they release on the other cars. There we go, we're moving now. Now we don't have to keep jumping out because I realise that's a little bit disruptive to watch. So we'll just watch our speed. Because we don't have very far to push, so I'll go back to idle now. And our speed's so low it won't matter when we just bonk into these cars, it'll be fine. And then I'll just apply the train brake and we'll be all good. Now I'm getting just a little bit quick. Let's just give it a bit of independent brake just to just to slow it down a tad. Probably pretty close to being there. There we go. That was a little violent, wasn't it? That's because I've got the uh, cab sway set at 200%, so it gets quite violent. All right, let's just set our gen field. Let's put our reverser back to neutral. I've already fully applied the independent brake. And we do that just to make things safe because we're going to jump out and we're going to go and have a look at which of these hoppers that we want to pick up. So let's just head out. This is shunting life. Up and down, up and down, up and down. I think we might want to run down here. It's a little bit far. So we've got most of our train put together now, so we're not doing too badly. And I'm going to have to look at my switch list in a moment because I need to know which hoppers I need. Now I'm putting these hoppers on the back because this railway requires you to have buffer cars at both ends of the explosive materials. And when we're going to switch our industry, which isn't part of what I'm showing you today, but we would drop these off push them past the siding and then push the other ones into the siding. So we've got number 13. I'm only looking at the last digits. And we've got 22. Good oh, we want that one. Those two are both for the pine pine bluffs, feed and grain. And then we've got 34 and 49. Well isn't that lucky? Alright, so just to make it a little bit easier for me. What I'm going to do is uncouple those and if we don't hit them too hard, hopefully they won't couple back up again. And the reason I'm doing that is I don't want to pump up that great big long train just to move these four cars. And all I want to do is take our train and couple it to these ones so that we can uh, do what we need to do. So we'll just get back up here and climb up into the locomotive and get it ready to move. I'm not sure what it thinks I can interact with. Something. Maybe there's a switch or something up there in the distance that it wants me to use. Quite possible. Alright, let's jump back in the cab. This is always just a little bit awkward. Doesn't matter what control method you use. Now, let's set our gen field again. If you don't know what the gen field is, it excites the generator. Okay. Release our brakes. And let's get a couple of notches on just while the brakes release so that we don't roll. Hopefully I picked the right direction. Did I? Did I? No, I didn't. Oh well. We're not all clever. All right. This time for sure. If you're wondering why that independent brake release message sits there, 
Sometimes with rail driver messages that happens, unfortunately. There we go. We are now going in the correct direction. So we're just going to jump out and we're going to use the 8 key and we're going to go flying up here. If you in console land, we're using free camera. And I still have the luxury of being able to control the train with the rail driver, which is why I like the thing. Train's moving quite happily now. Basically, we just need to get them past this set of points up here. And while we're waiting, let's just wander over here. Those points are set okay, so... Uh, no, that's not the right track, actually. We want... Whoops, whoops. That's a bit quick, isn't it? We want that track. And those are not set correctly, so we might as well do this while we're waiting. There's, they're now set for the track that the hoppers are in. And we'll come up to these points. Because we're going to tell our driver what's going on. Right, our driver, I'm on the ground near the points. All right, driver, we've got five cars to go. Four cars. Three cars. Two cars. Last car coming through now. And stop it there, mate. A little bit longer to stop than I thought. But that's okay. Because stop we have. Well, nearly anyway. Alright then. So, that's the track we're going to go to. And we need to switch these. So that we go through that junction now. Now I'm just going to start this going, so I'm going to switch direction with the rail driver, release the brakes, and a little bit of throttle, but not much, because I don't want him to run me over. And I'm going to come down here and call him onto these cars down here. Naturally, I can fly. Whee! Can't you fly? But we all could do it. So the train's probably just started to move by now. Looking at the rail driver, it has. So the other cool thing about the rail driver is you have a speed indicator. Makes going HUD free just that little bit easier. Sounds like there's a fire going on somewhere. Whee! All right then. Now we just keep an eye on our train, who's a fair way away at the moment. But he is definitely moving. He's up to four mile an hour. We don't want him to get too quick. Because you might have noticed just how long it took to stop when I said to stop. We kept going for another probably car and a half. And when I keep mentioning cars, if you're used to calling them wagons... Well, that's what I'm talking about. Because the wonderful thing about railways is we all have the same things, no matter where we are in the world, but we all use different terminology for it. It could be quite confusing at times when you're uh, 
trying to interact with someone else from somewhere else in the world. Righto driver, I've got you there. Keep coming, good speed. Alright, driver, roughly 10 cars to go. Start easing off your speed now. Five cars to go. Four cars to go. Three cars to go. Bring your speed down, driver. Two cars to go. One car to go. Coupling up. Good speed. All right. Now, there's a fair chance we pushed those hard enough to couple the others up. Let's go and look. We wanted four of them, I think. Let me just check my list here. This is the last car that we want. So, did we couple them up again? We did. Look at that. Ah, uh, no, we did not. How's that? That was a bit lucky, wasn't it? All right, let's go back up to the front. Because our next task is to get these into the road and then we can go and do our departure paperwork. You take this run by as an opportunity to check your switch list. Just in case there's any doubt, there really is one. So here we have two covered hoppers, which are for cruise concrete, and they are full of lime. And they are number 49 and 34. And yeah, we can check that. Next up, we have got two more hoppers for Pine Bluffs Feed and Grain, and they are 22 and 13. That makes sense. Now we've got our five tank cars here. Two, three, four, five. Good. And they're for our two customers, Frontier and Suncor. And then we've got our gondolas full of coal, which are for the steelworks. And finally, we've got our boxcars full of mixed goods for Sierra. Righto then, just stop him there. And that's all we need to do. So I hope this has been interesting and a bit of fun and a little bit educational if you don't know anything about shunting. Now, I haven't gone into great detail and I haven't been at all specific about any particular railway or railroad. I've just given you some general examples of things that are going to be relatively realistic no matter where you're operating. Um, there are, of course, going to be lots and lots of rules and regulations that belong to every particular place and you can be a rivet counter and work to those completely and learn your railroad and learn your route and do absolutely everything by the book 
or you can take a fairly generalist approach and basically just have fun with it. And that's essentially what I do. So thanks very much for watching. This has been Train Simulator Driver. And I hope you enjoy the rest of Railfan TV during March Madness. Thanks very much. Bye now.